Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, 320 Simpilot, and today we are going to take a look at a walk around of the A320neo in Microsoft Flight Simulator. As ever, I am a real world Airbus pilot, but nothing in this video is for any use in the real world, of course, it's just to give you some extra context on your home simulations. The walk around is something that we do before every flight, so uh, every single sector that we fly in the aircraft, one of the pilots will go outside and do a walk around, which is pretty much a visual inspection of uh, the aircraft to make sure there's nothing left that shouldn't be there or anything that has become dislodged or in the wrong place since the previous flight. The A320 in Microsoft Flight Simulator has been modelled very well on the outside so it gives us a lot of opportunity to look through all these differences. I will be using the fly-by-wire mod for this video but I don't believe it has any impact on the external model at all so this should be the same even if you're just using the default A320neo. This was one of the first videos I made back when I started up this channel about I think it was about seven months ago now so it is something uh, that I thought would be fun to go and revisit especially now we have a whole new simulator and quite a high fidelity visual model. So let's get started. Before stepping foot outside of the aircraft to do your walk around, which depending on the airline will be either the pilot flying the sector or the pilot monitoring for the sector. Um, it does vary, so it's going to be up to the airline's procedures. But there's some things we want to do before we go outside for our walk around. First of all, the aircraft will typically need to be powered on uh, for the reasons I'm about to show you. We want to turn on the navigation lights. That doesn't have to be done if you're flying around entirely in the daytime in Europe certainly you don't need to have these on I talk about that in my lights video but uh, it's quite common to check they're on and especially in winter you're almost certainly going to have some part of the flight at night or it's much more common so we'll make sure the navigation lights are on we're also going to make sure that the weather radar is actually switched off it's down here it's this little metal switch here and it's quite small so it's just worth checking that off before you go outside and especially as you've probably just powered on the airplane so if it's on just make sure that's then turned off it should be off already so those are two things that i typically do before i head outside you're going to want some sort of high visibility uh, equipment on you as well so typically a high visibility vest because it is a busy place out on the apron it's uh, full of large moving vehicles that are all looking at the aeroplane to make sure they don't hit that so there's more chance that you're uh, going to get missed so yeah you want to be as visible as possible okay of course the other pilot will stay up here continue the overhead setup aligning the irs's and so on i have a video on cold and dark setup if you'd like to see that on my channel and i'll provide a link now and let's get ourselves down the stairs and start our walk around so here we are then, we've made it downstairs, uh, however you do that in this airport. We're currently in Bilbao in northern Spain um, and it's a nice day here for a walk around, which is always pleasant. You always try and choose your flights to be the flight where you get to do the walk around at the sunny place as opposed to the one that's pouring with rain. So you end up starting in the forward left hand fuselage, which is here, and we're going to work our way around the aircraft following a sort of clockwise pattern if you're looking top down. So I'm going to head up around the nose, around the right wing, tail, left wing, and back to here. So what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we have angle of attack indicators. There's one here, there's another one here, there's one on the other side. You want to check these aren't damaged. What these do is these flow in the airflow, um, so they can tell the relative angle of the body of the airplane to the air. So when they reach a high angle, then the aircraft knows that it's close to a stall and it uses those for stall warners and all sorts of other things. So that's your angle of attack. We've also got our static ports here. Here we have the captain and first officer static ports. There's two more on the other side. A static port is pretty much just a hole to the outside air, the ambient air. And that's how the instruments can tell what altitude we're at because the air pressure lowers. So there's one for each of us there, and then there's another two on the other side. So we've got uh, two angle of attack indicators. Most of these, which are pretty flight critical systems, there's three on the aircraft to make sure that we have enough backup. So there'll be one for the captain, one for the FO, and uh, one for the standby systems. Underneath the aircraft, we have some antennas. Um, so these are for various things, and I won't even pretend to be able to remember all of them. Um, it's just something you need to check the condition of. So my understanding is that these antennas will be uh, DME. I think we've got DME 1 and 2 up here, um, as well as a TCAS antenna back here. So 
I'll do my best to try and remember as many of these antennas as possible as we uh, head around the aeroplane. Then we're looking at the nose gear. Very important. This takes a lot of uh, pressure over the flight, obviously. It's required for safe steering, not only on the start and end of the takeoff roll, but obviously at the whole time on the ground. And if you lose the nose wheel steering suddenly, that would be a very bad day. We want to look at the condition of the lights. Again, I talk about those in my uh, lighting video. So you've got, these are the runway turnoff lights. There's one on each side. They shine out at an angle. Then you have your taxi light and your takeoff light here, shine forwards. You're also looking for general condition, and that's sort of a theme of the entire walk around video. Um, you're looking for any obvious signs of leaks, tire deflation, cuts on the tires that are too deep, that sort of thing. Oleo extension, which is this bit here, you want to make sure there is some pressure in there. So this looks good. In fact, that's quite raised actually. Um, you can have it right down here sometimes, but as long as you can see some sort of uh, chrome, it's, it's more shiny on the real airplane. So you can tell that the aircraft has, um, has pressure in that oleo. This here is the hydraulic actuator, which is what steers the nose wheel on the grounds. If you have the nose gear pin in place, which I can't quite see here, it normally features about here, you can see it on the real aircraft. What that would do, that would be a metal pin that's inserted and it locks the landing gear down. So engineers may sometimes use that. So that's certainly something you want to make sure is not there if you're going to play with flying because it will be very embarrassing if you take off and you can't raise a landing gear because you didn't see the pin. It normally has a flag on it to warn you uh, and you also check that it is actually on the flight deck where it's stored to make sure it's not in. Right. As we head along, we have some more things. Now, this is exclusive to the NEO, so I'm quite impressed they've done it. Um, these two discs here are the oxygen pressure discs. So we have oxygen stored on the aircraft for the pilots, as well as obviously the passengers have their own oxygen supplies. The pilot oxygen in the old A320 or the A321, the previous generation, not the NEOs, has only one bottle. But there's two bottles on the NEO, so you get two discs. This disc will be missing if the oxygen has overpressured or leaked out and it will put pressure on that disc and pop it out. So that's why we check those to make sure that they're okay. Then we have various hatches um, for avionics equipment. As we come forward, we've got the pitots, obviously. So this is a pitot and this is a pitot. These measure the air pressure on the front of the airplane, so the airflow, and therefore tell you your airspeed. They're highly advanced. They are incredibly well calibrated and accurate and they also are heated obviously and all sorts of other things and they account for temperature changes. It's a very clever system. But yeah, you have uh, three of these again. So there's two here, one on the other side. This sensor, the slightly different shape is the total air temperature sensor. So this takes the air hitting the front of the airplane and measures its temperature. The total air temperature is hotter than ambient air temperature, but it can also convert into static air temperature, which is the actual temperature outside. On the ground, it's all the same. More yellow antennas. I'm not entirely sure which one this is. It, um, it could be the uh, an ATC, so a transponder um, antenna. It's, um, <laughs> there's quite a few, and they're not, they're not typically labeled very clearly. They're not labeled on the outside at all, in fact. Then we have our standby static port. So again, little holes in there, just like on the side here. This tells you the air pressure going in, um, and it can sense that. So that's the backup system for the ambient air pressure therefore your altitude then we have the radome or the nose cone whatever you want to call it covering the weather radar most of the airplane is made of uh, obviously metal of various varieties and this will be a composite structure because the radar can't see through metal so this is actually quite um, a important thing to check you don't want to see any big uh, dents in this or anything like that because with composites you need to be careful that they're not they're structurally integral only when they're not dented as it were so yeah you want to be sure that this is in good condition latched down properly and so on back around the other side and we start to see more of the same things you'll notice a theme here where the whole aircraft is <laughs> symmetrical obviously so we have the other standby static we've got another total air temperature probe we've got another pito then we have another way into the avionics here they have um, not modeled it fully, but this is actually part of the avionics cooling. So if you walk around the aircraft, as you get to about here, if you're walking about here, you'll get blasted in the face with the air being th thrown through all the computers in the flight deck. Um, it's amazing how much air is actually pumped around because you can stand a fair way down from that and still get blasted with air. It's very noisy. Um, it does close sometimes when the air temperature is cool enough. So in flight, that's typically closed, but on the ground, it usually opens to get more air through. 
and obviously you're going to check this side of the landing gear this little box here is used to show the uh, fact that the parking brake is on so you can't see it there's that little button you can test it here there's a little parking brake light if the parking brake is on that light should be on that way the ground crew won't try and push the aeroplane back whilst the parking brake is on now i know in microsoft flight simulator they do anyway but that's what this little box is for it also is used to disconnect the nose wheel steering because when the uh, crew are pushing us back the nose wheel steering is disconnected so that even if the hydraulics on the airplane power on which they will during engine start the nose wheel will not power on it will stay disconnected so that they can continue to steer it whilst they push you back very important you actually get an indication of nose wheel steering disconnect on the flight deck whilst that's disconnected that will disappear when they do it properly and take it out it does go amber after one of the engines is started another panel is here this panel here is used by the uh, ground crew to or is it this panel one of these is maybe it's this one i think it's this one is used by the ground crew to plug in the ground power so a cable you'll often see an airbus with a cable here it's plugging in an electrical supply into the aircraft you can also do a few other things from here um, and it can be used they plug in a headset to talk to the pilots during the pushback because obviously two-way communication incredibly important during pushbacks because we don't rely on this light for the parking brake it's all done on uh, communication normally and if not hand signals if you can't talk to the ground crew more static ports again the captain fo are here and here's the other angle of attack sensor this is the forward cargo door that is uh often open whilst you're doing your walk around so you have to be very careful of um uh, they, they've finished now but the baggage loaders were all here earlier as you saw in the opening so i try and walk away carefully there's our transponder antenna and this sort of square one here i believe this is a drain mast so this is used for the sink in the forward galley. That is a wing light up here, shines back onto the wing, which we use occasionally to look for ice, although on the 321, you can't even see the wing. It's too far away from the flight deck. So this mast here is heated. The water drains from the sink and we don't drain anything from the aircraft into the atmosphere except for water from the sinks um, because that can just evaporate it. It doesn't really, it doesn't fall to the ground. Um, or it usually doesn't make it to the ground. Uh, so this is heated to make sure it doesn't freeze um, because obviously if this wasn't heated up at 38,000 feet, the water would freeze and then you'd just have a blocked sink. So that's there, that's hot, don't touch it. Good, then we have the uh, sort of wing box area around here looking for the whole time, again, you're looking for any sort of screws or leaks or things like that. As we go underneath the airplane, we can see some more things. We've got the beacon, again, talked about in my lights video. This will be flashing to warn the ground crew the engines are starting or running. Uh, no crew will be near the aircraft when this is on, or if they see it come on, they will certainly run away or move out of the way quite quickly. Here we have an inlet swings inwards. This is a pack inlet. So there's two packs on the Airbus on the air conditioning system and if you guys are interested i may do a video about the air conditioning system i'm not an engineer but i i can just do my best with it but essentially we take air from the engines that are running and pump it into the cabin but obviously from the engines it's very hot it's taken from uh, the middle of the engine it's still taken from before the air is ignited but anyway it's, it is hot so it has to be cooled down by an air conditioning pack they're called and there's two one on this side and then there's another one on this side you can see the inlet there these take air in they use ambient air to cool down the air in the um, from the engine and before it's sent into the cabin so that air is taken in and then it comes out of this exhaust here now in winter that is really nice if the packs are turned on they'll be turned on on the ground by using the apu instead of the engines to provide the air but yeah they suck in air and then it's blasted out the back and all nice and warm so that isn't warm engine air it's just air from the outside that's going around and being heated up by exchanging heat exchanging effectively and blast it out the back there so you get nice warm airflow so that's a nice point to pause and warm up <laughs> as long as you've got some sort of head uh, ears protection because it is incredibly loud when those packs are on it is really really loud if you board an airbus and you hear a sort of it's almost like a screaming sound it'll be that those packs on they're very loud then of course we're looking at the wings we want to check that the uh, um, slats are in good condition the fuel tanks are here so this area is often covered in ice in winter or frost of some variety you're not allowed ice on the top of the wing at all for takeoff you are allowed some underneath as long as it's in the area of the fuel tanks and it's not too thick and there's other restrictions on it but um, essentially you you could easily see condensation that's frozen here 
after landing, even in summer, for a short while until it melts off. Once you put more fuel on from the ground, it typically melts off because, of course, the fuel is cold after a long flight. So often dripping water here as you do your walk around. There is a fuel panel here, but they haven't modelled that. Sadly, that's used for refuelling. Uh, that's a little square here where the refuelling uh, personnel can type in the amount of fuel to upload, open the valves, that sort of thing. Around here, you can hear that noise. I'll just turn it up for you. That is from the A320 fly-by-wire mod. That's the fuel pumps running. And they do make exactly that noise. It's a really nice effect. Um, the fuel pumps are sort of down here. We turn them off for long turnarounds, but they uh, they can be left on for short turnarounds. Here's the landing lights. Check it's in good condition and there's glass attached. It doesn't look in too great condition in the sim, I must admit. But uh, yeah, that's there. I think there's a bit of a graphical glitch going on there. And then the landing gear, main landing gear. Checking that there's no landing gear pin inserted. It's slightly different. It's not quite a small pin on the main landing gear. Um, but there's a big red bar that would be fitted around here to stop the landing gear retracting so that would be the same effect as if you forgot to take it out in those gear you'd take off and not be able to raise the landing gear very embarrassing then we're looking at tires again for inflation condition wear brake pins are usually down here they're not modeled they would tell you how much brake is left on the um, aircraft so they're little pins that wear away and you can get an idea if you're about to run out of brakes and you need to get an engineer to inspect it here we have the main wheel and here is the brake fan. So this is a little uh, fan that can spin around and blast air onto the brakes to cool them down during the turnarounds or the taxi out. It's not something you want to use as soon as you've uh, landed because the brakes take time to heat up and it's not good for them to blast them with cold air straight away. But yeah, it's something you do before you park on stand because it will uh, send out a load of carbon dust because these are carbon brakes. So you don't want to turn those on um, unless you've had them on during the taxi already. Same thing again, checking the compression on the Oleo here and making sure there is some inflation in this uh, this leg. Okay, now we're going to move along to the engine, the big Neo engines, absolutely massive. What are we checking for on here? Well, again, checking all the doors are closed, the condition of things like this, um, the cell strake they're called. Uh, these are used to direct airflow and improve the performance of the wing around the engine. You can see the diagrams here. These are nice stickers saying, I don't know what that means, no entry. <laughs> I'm not sure, but uh, I guess don't go forward with that line, I suppose is what it's saying. Because um, obviously there's a big intake when the engine's running. You're going to look underneath. There's some drain masks which aren't modeled here to check there's nothing pouring out the engine like oil. And then you've got these little latches, which is very important to check these are all closed because they're hard to see. You've got to really get down um, low to be able to see them, but you want to make sure the engine cowling is properly closed. On the NEO aircraft, we actually have a sensor in the flight deck um, and a flag that sticks out around about here to warn you if the uh, engine is not latched properly. Then we're going to come to the intake. Huge, great intake on the NEO, really nice. They've done a nice job on this effect around the interior intake. I quite like that. Um, and we've got the large, large, large fan blades. You can't actually spin the engine by the fan blades or slow it down by them because they're so big you could end up twisting them. So you can just sort of get a look in and you can use a spinner if you need to, to to sort of slow it down. But typically, because it's so big and so easy to look into, it's not such a problem on the Neo. And you're just looking for condition, making sure none of the blades have been chipped recently or um, cracked or anything silly like that. Looking for any signs of a bird that may have gone in there. And sometimes you can see it's not modeled here. The actual engine itself is just this little grey box there. Um, I don't know if I go into the engine. I can, I think. Yeah, it's that. That's the core of the engine. All this area around the side is just cold air blown through by that fan. So yeah, amazing piece of design, these these Neo engines. Just huge, huge, great fans with tiny little engines in the middle. Um, so yeah, very good. Right, moving on then. Also, of course, check the intake. Any signs of wear damage. Same again on the other side, making sure there's nothing leaking out. Cowling's down properly, reverses are stowed and that sort of thing. And you get round towards the back of the engine, but we'll do that as we get around uh, the back of the wing. Now, again, looking along the slats all the way along, checking they're in good condition. What we've got out here is, again, sort of modelled. Here they've got the uh, vent valve, so that lets ambient air into the outer fuel tank to provide some sort of pressure in there. And then you've got the main fuel tanks. Um, and there's also overpressure discs to show you if the refueling has provided too much pressure in the fuel tanks, but that's not modeled here. So we'll follow our slats out, check they're on in good condition. Obviously in winter, looking for any ice, you don't want any ice on any of those sorts of things. Out to the edge, 
nav lights green and on so that's good these little static wicks you want to make sure they're all in the right place these are actually very important they help reduce static interference on the aircraft in case of uh, the radio so if you're missing some of these you can actually get quite loud static on the radio systems it's quite quite difficult to hear air traffic so yeah these are always checked and they just disperse it they're called static wicks they disperse it into the atmosphere as you fly along because of course flying an airplane through the air rubbing all the air over it does produce static electricity and these disperse it again then we go to the flaps looking along for the cowlings making sure or these these pylons i suppose i should call them uh, making sure they're all in good condition and then we get to the back of the engine again looking for any signs of oil the hot air comes out of this center part just here so that is uh, really hot you can see the the turbine at the back and then uh, you've got the cold air coming around the sides and yeah pretty much same thing again checking this wheel checking that uh, brake fan here we have the hydraulic lines for the brakes so making sure these are all connected and in good condition and again brake pins if they're fitted onto the back of your aircraft here we have the landing gear door so checking this is all sitting flush in good condition you've got to be really careful walking around of this door because as you can see if i go right in front of it it's really quite thin. In fact, I think it looks thinner than that in real life. The leading edge is really sharp. So if you walk straight into it, you'd really hurt yourself. So you've got to be really careful of that. Right. Heading down then. That's amazing. I don't know how they've done the... The sound ambiently like that. <laughs> Depending on where you are. Very clever. Right. Then we get towards the rear of the aircraft. This white antenna, this is a VHF antenna. So that's one of the normal radio antennas we use to talk to air traffic control. Here's the rear cargo door. Again, often open whilst you're doing your walk around. So you're having to sort of duck and dive between uh, vehicles, which is why it's very important you have your uh, high visibility jacket on. As we go underneath, we now have these little white bumps. These are the radio altimeters. So there's not five, there's only four because two are connected and two are connected and this one doesn't exist so it sends a signal down to the ground bounces it back up and then it can time that signal and measure how high you are from the ground incredibly accurate incredibly advanced system used once you get down into lower altitudes it's not used for high altitude so it activates at 2500 feet above the ground um, and lower and it will be used for things like low visibility landings and the aircraft can use it to auto land and things like that because it's it's incredibly accurate the call outs you hear on landing when it says 50 40 30 20 10 that will be done from the radio altimeter and you've got two there's one and there's the second one here and like i say not that one's not real here's the last cargo entrance that's not used um, too often but it's bulk loading so random objects that don't quite fit into the main cargo hold then we've got the rear door here we have the toilet service door another outflow mask this is for the rear galley sink so again you don't want to walk underneath these because water could pour out um, and likewise this valve is used by the toilet service here is the outflow valve of the so this is a, a drain mask i suppose not a valve this is the outflow valve of the cabin so it's closed at the moment on the ground it's actually always open and what that does is when the air is pushed into the cabin from the engines in flight to pressurize the cabin, this valve is where the air comes out. And to regulate the cabin altitude, this valve opens and closes. So we pump air continuously through the aircraft. Some of it gets let out, and that's how we maintain the right cabin altitude. You don't want too much air in the cabin, or it's uh, be overpressured, and that could stress the airplane. And likewise, obviously, too little, and there won't be enough air for us to be happy. So this valve is what they do on the ground, like I say, completely open, blasting out all the air. Right, as we move over to the tail, again, looking at the leading edge, looking at the conditions. This is not heated. It looks like it might be, but it is not. It's just the, the leading edge of the uh, tailplane. You've got more static wicks up here on the elevator, and we get to the APU. So the APU is mounted in the tail. It's about here. We've got the inlet flap. So this is when it says flap open on the ECAM. When you power up the APU, this is where that flap is and it will be closed in flight. It looks like it's open at the moment and that lets the air into the jet engine in the tail, which is the auxiliary power unit. And that's what gives us electricity and air on the ground. These latches should all be closed, obviously. They're hiding the APU in there and this is the exhaust. It blasts the air out the back of the tail. Very noisy again, um, so you definitely want hearing protection if you are around here. We have our tail lights. Normally only one of these lights will be on, system one or system two. Again, 
looking at the condition, checking there's nothing blocking things like the uh, APU exhaust. More static valves, same. So I won't repeat stuff that's obviously the same, but checking the condition of the tail uh, and the uh, fin at the top. Then we've got more masts, um, outflow, oil, overflow masts, things like that, making sure there's nothing dripping from them. Then we move down. There is also a, another disc here in the rear aircraft, which shows you if the fire bottle has uh, overpressured and leaked. So that should be in, but it's not modeled here. Similar principle to the oxygen discs at the front, I believe. Rear door, this is the potable water. So on the other side was the toilet service and this side is the water service. So that's where the fresh water and the sink water is loaded onto the aircraft. Um, and yeah, same again. Then we want to make sure obviously that there's been no tail strikes or anything like that on the bottom of the fuselage. So just checking for any scrapes, general condition. Back to the radio altimeters, the VHF antenna. Another drain mast here for, for various systems in the aircraft. So you don't want to make, you make sure nothing's leaking out of there. And same again, I don't want to spend too long boring you with this, obviously, but the landing gear condition, and it's pretty much symmetrical as with the other side. You're going to go and do your whole wing, your flaps, your ailerons. Normally the ailerons droop down on the ground. So if there's no hydraulic pressure, they'll just be resting um, down. Although I must say on some of the Neo aircraft, I noticed that sometimes they don't seem to droop as easily as on the older aircraft. But yeah, they rely on hydraulic pressure to stay in place. So if you see your aircraft and all the flight controls look like they're just hanging down, it's just because it's not pressurized, the hydraulic systems. This is the anti-collision light. The white strobe light is here, whereas the navigation lights are here. Again, normally only one bulb lit at a time. This white light is surprisingly bright, and it actually, with the shark lit aircraft, flashes, and you can see it in the flight deck. It's out the corner of your eye. It flashes against some of the instruments. So at night, it's, it's uh, amazing, actually, you notice that. So I sometimes put down the um, sun visor on the rear window when you don't need it, um, and it can help block that out a little bit. Moving on the wing, all the same things as before. Uh, these registration markings, by the way, there's loads of rules about where they need to be and the size they need to be and so on. So that's why you see them printed all over the airplane like this. And back onto the other aircrafts, uh, you've got all the different panels and markings. I believe this panel behind here is the... Uh, fire extinguishing squib it's called a little bottle full of fire extinguishing agent that can be put into the engine if required although again i'm not an engineer so i can't, i'm not going to be 100 percent certain on that <laughs> but yeah um checking the condition of the engine tires intakes same things all over again make sure it's all in good shape for your flight that's coming up that brings us back around to here final bits then you've got obviously once you've done the landing gear the landing lights this little bump here, this is the ram air turbine housing. It actually sticks out slightly. The ram air turbine is a little fan generator that will drop out into the airflow in case the aircraft loses all electrical power and it can generate electricity just enough to drive the simple systems for the aircraft to be safe to fly. Uh, it can also be used to provide hydraulic power as well because it can spin and drive a hydraulic pump in case you've lost all hydraulic power. So uh, things like a dual engine failure, things like that. This is a Big heavy fan, I don't stand too near it because there are buttons on the flight deck that if you press, this will drop out. So uh, I make sure that I, I stand far enough away just in case because uh, I don't want to be hit with that on the head. That would be a big thing. Um, but yeah, just one of those on that side and obviously the other pack inlets here. This little panel here is where it says air conditioning. What they do here is they'll plug in the uh, ground air conditioning. So sometimes... There'll be a yellow tube. I don't think it's shown here. No, it's, it's typically a yellow tube, big inflatable tube, like a bouncy castle tube or something like that. It plugs in here and pumps cold air or warm air into the cabin. That way you can turn off the APU and still have air in the cabin. So that's what that is used for. If we go up onto the top of the airplane, I can only oh, pretend to know what uh, these are antennas are because I simply don't um, <laughs> ever see the top of the airplane, which is always one of those funny things. You've got the VHF antenna, these white antennas typically. Um, we've also got more uh, DME and uh, TCAS antennas up here, so a lot of duplication. The GPS antenna is up here as well, because um, obviously that's satellite based, so there's no point putting that underneath the airplane, I suppose. Uh, and then a few others. You'll see large antennas at the back on some airliners, typically long haul aircraft, although some sh smaller short haul airbuses, um, typically around the back there. That is a uh, satellite antenna for getting internet usually. If you're wondering what these lines are, these are simply so that when it's raining, the water drains around the door. Because um, especially if you're sitting on the flight deck, you'll notice that water 
a lot of water lands on top of you know quite a large surface and drains all down the side so it would be soaking <laughs> without that so yeah that has to be there really quite a neat design anyway that brings us really to the end of our, our walk around so I'm sure there's things I've missed there as I said not for real world use um, it's just uh, a bit of fun to give you guys an idea of what we're looking for when we go and do our walk around I hope the video has been uh, useful for you do let me know in the comments what you think and as always there'll be more videos coming on the channel soon more streams um, so do please like and subscribe of course if you'd like to see more of those and let me know what you thought in the comments otherwise we'll see you again in another video soon thank you very much keep safe goodbye